Hey guys, Theron Asbury here with Revital Outdoors, bringing you another exciting podcast. Tonight we're going to interview one of our Revital Outdoors uh, pro staff anglers. Uh, His name is Mr. Richard Hare. He is fixing to fish the Potomac River BFL tournament, so we're very, very excited to talk to Richard tonight. He's going to give us a little insight about his history on Potomac River, what he predicts for this year. I can tell you, looking at his profile, Richard's got a great Great resume built up from the Potomac River, so a very exciting podcast coming your way. Before we get started, uh, Revital Outdoors is proud to announce we are doing a $2,500 giveaway for all anglers. All you have to do is enter into that giveaway. You can do that a couple different ways. The first way being I'm going to put up a QR code real quick. Take your cell phone, scan this code. It is coming to you right now. Okay, thank you for scanning that code and entering to our uh, giveaway. If you couldn't scan that code, then the link uh, to enter the giveaway is at the top of the description right below uh, this video. So go ahead and click on that link. Make sure you get in. Again, that's a $2,500 giveaway that one lucky angler is going to win, and I promise you, you're going to want to be entered. Uh, Make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel. That way you get notified when all of our content is dropping. We've been having a lot of great fun interviewing all the BFL anglers. Also check us out on Facebook and Instagram. That's Revital Outdoors. And if you've never heard of Revital Outdoors, we're a premium CBD company. We offer premium CBD products to all the outdoor enthusiasts out there. So check out our website, www.revitaloutdoors.com. And our products are THC-free, made right here in America, and you can purchase them directly off our website. That being said, the housekeeping stuff is taken care of. Let's go ahead and uh, bring in Mr. Richard Hare. How are you doing this evening, bud? Man, I'm doing pretty good. Actually, rig and tackle. <laughs> Rig and tackle. What are you fishing this weekend? Uh, we got a Smith Mountain Lake Shenandoah division this weekend. So we'll go down there and see if we can uh, catch us a few. I got you. I got you. So, well, tell us a little bit about Potomac River. You know, Richard, you and I talked a little bit on Facebook. Um, again, we're very, very proud to have you on our pro staff program with Revital Outdoors. And uh, you talk highly about Potomac River. And then I looked up your uh, resume on Potomac. You've done really great there. So, Man, you know, I've only ever fished and only ever heard about fishing there in May and in the summertime, so post-spawn and then in the summer. But what makes it so special in the springtime, like this time of year? Well, a lot of it, man, you know, the Potomac from what it used to do to what it does now. Years ago, the Potomac used to fish really big. I mean, you could fish it from D.C. down almost to the 301 Bridge, and Creek, you know, Wachota Creek, places down there. As the years have gone on, you know, the grass is as dominant as it used to be, and it's just, it doesn't fish as big. So, the pre-spawn, you're not dealing with so much heavy pressure already. You know, I I don't think the fish are quite as pressured as they are later in the summer. And then the hydrilla is not in there yet. I mean, fish, they're they're milfoil fish, you know, and they always have been, and You know, the milfoil typically comes in before the hydrilla does. And, you know, those fish, they like to set up on it and it tends to heat up a little faster. And, you know, to me, that's what makes that difference in that pre spawn. You know, you're fishing predominantly milfoil. Okay. Okay. I got you. I got you. So, uh, that being said, um, are you catching fish that are bedding or are you catching fish in the pre spawn mode this time of year? Or are they just actively feeding? I mean, what's going on on the river this time of year? They're, they're not quite ready to bed just yet. Water temperature hasn't gotten there. And this past weekend, we had a Potomac uh, battle series out there. And, you know, there were some good weights called. I think 21 pounds won it. I was fifth with like 16. But the fish are up. They're shallow. Which, I mean, they're shallow year round. These, these fish don't, they never go deep. You know, they're just, they're river fish. But um, they want to spawn. Water temperature is just not quite there yet, so they're active, they're up shallow, they're feeding, and I mean, it's a good time to be on the Potomac River. You know, it's it's rocking and rolling out there right now. How much does the tides factor into fishing this time of year? It factors in year-round, but okay. this time of year and any time you fish the river, I mean, it's a tidal fishery. I mean, you know, I think where some guys struggle – me personally, I don't run tide. You know, I like to practice in an area, kind of hone in on one thing, and then I wait them out. You know, I've I've put the power poles down at eight o'clock and not picked them up till two thirty. You know, it just they're gonna eat. It's just a matter of time of when. Sometime in that tide window, 
you know, they will eat. So, I mean, you can run Tide, and, you know, if you're running hardcover, dock, something like that, you know, Tide will definitely play in that. But 100%, they are Tide-dependent fish. No matter if you're fishing up north, you're fishing down south, anywhere you're fishing, they're, they're Tide-dependent. Okay, I got you. Richard, I don't want you to give away too many of your secrets on the Potomac. Like I said, I know you got a tournament coming up. But if you will, for all the listeners oh, out there right. that are not – well, for all the listeners out there that are not used to fishing tidal uh, uh, rivers and tidal systems, first of all, I can tell you it's – I hate to say it this way. It's a pain in the ass. Or it can be. It can make or break you real quickly. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about like what you do, what you like to do on a low tide and maybe on a high tide. A lot of folks, when they, when they get on these rivers, especially you know practice and stuff like that, they get into these areas that have the past, and they get overwhelmed with it. You know, because it's just there's so much of it, you know, and whether you're on a high tide or low tide doesn't really make a difference. You know, when, when you're in there, and you're breaking that grass down. I like to look for any subtle differences. It might be a point in the grass. It might be maybe it's a little thicker here. Maybe there's patches here. You know, anything that might be different about that grass. And then, you know, for a high tide, I usually push it a little closer to the bank. I think the fish tend to do that on the higher tide. And then the lower tide, you know, I'm just going to move out as the fish moves out. And, you know, I mean, we have about a foot and a half tide swing up here. And, you know, you get a dead low tide and a lot of stuff that I was catching fish on that morning or, you know, whatever, on that high tide, I mean, it's dirt come the afternoon. You know, so I just, I'll slide out as the fish slide out. You know, you just, you adjust to them. There's, there's no fishing one way on the river. I mean, you got to adjust and do what the fish want you to do. I got you. I got you. So, um, what? Here's a real basic question: What are the fish targeting? What kind of bait fish are they targeting on the Potomac? Well, I mean, they're going to eat shad. You know, we do have shad on the Potomac. Me personally, I I focus on the bluegill bite. I mean, it's the predominant bait out there. A little funny. I, I got on something last year, my my fishing buddies thought I was crazy, but I think these fish in the summertime, especially, I think they're eating crabs. Um, we get blue crabs that come up in the river and, you know, those smaller people crabs will come up in there. And I had actually blue crab claws in a live well last year. And, you know, we cashed a check in a pretty big tournament out there in the end of the year. And to be honest with you, that's what I was doing. I was out fishing the crab pots. And it's something I've never done. I've, I've been fishing that river since I was old enough to walk. And I never thought to do it. And I don't know what made me think of it that time. And just if we did and it worked out. And I mean, blue crabs late in the summertime. All right. I got to ask now, how in the hell can you replicate a blue crab? Are you throwing like a black and blue jig or are you throwing like a creature braid? Or I mean, because you that, can't that's... exactly go to Bass Pro and pick up a bunch of crab baits. Yeah, I've got, I'll be honest with you, I've got something that I throw. It's, uh, it's a jig. I can't get into too many details about it. It's, it's something I've been able to keep pretty pretty much to myself. Um, I've got a gentleman that makes them for me, and yeah, they're, you know, dark-colored jigs. That, that's going to be about your way to go. And I mean, when those blue crabs are in the water, I mean, they're, you know, that's what they're named for. They're blue. You know, they're not, mm -hmm. they're not colored like a crawdad or anything like that. I mean, they have a bright blue on them. They're, and, they're blue. I mean, very blue. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that, I mean, they thought I was crazy till we went out and did it. And then they were like, you know, maybe you're not so crazy. <laughs> you know, so it, it actually worked. I don't know if it'll work this year, but we're going to try. Fair enough. Fair enough. I got you. So typically this time of year, what kind of weight is it taking on the Potomac River to do, like, let's say to win and cash a check? I think, you know, two weeks in that BFL, the weather looks like it's going to be phenomenal. You know, we're supposed to get 70 degrees, lows in the high 50s here coming up. I'm going to go out and say it's going to take 23 to 25 to win it. Uh, I, I think there'll be somebody that really catches them. Um, we just oh, had a 25, okay. you know, we just had a big 25 pound bag called a couple weeks ago, you know, so yeah, I think it's going to take 25 and I think it's going to take probably 16 to 18 to get a check. Okay. Okay. What's so, big fish this time of year? 
Yeah, it's, you know, everybody, it's weird because you, you got guys who haven't fished a river for as long as I have. And, you know, they don't know what the Potomac used to be. I mean, there used to be a time on the Potomac where if you didn't have 20 pounds, you just you, know, you might as well turn them back. You know, the place was just phenomenal. And then it fell off for a few years. But, man, it's I thought it fished really well last year. The pros came here, you know, the MLF tour. And them guys called them. The Toyota Series, those guys called them. You know, we had a local guy did real well in the Toyota Series last year and had another local guy win it as a co-angler. Um, ironically, he was in my boat in the BFL and won that one too last year. Um, okay. Yeah, he's a, he's a stick. He, he's a tough one to have in the back of your boat. But, um, but yeah, I mean, the river, the grass is good. The grass this year is as good as I've seen it in 15 years. I mean, it's, it's phenomenal. You know, it's a lot of grass. It's, it's green. It's, it's healthy. It's a lot of milfoil. You know, you shouldn't have any issues finding fish. I mean, everywhere from, you know, Piscataway Creek down to Potomac Creek, everywhere is going to have fish. And they're not out there spraying the grass. They're just letting it kind of grow and be healthy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I know there's some, nice. there's some wives that, you know, that live on the river. They kill the grass around their house and stuff. You know, but from my understanding, that's against the law in Maryland. You know, they, they tend to frown upon that. And it's a good thing that they do, you know, because it really hurts the river. You know, those fish need the grass. They they need it for the bait. and I mean, they live in it year round. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know exactly where you're coming from. I know exactly where you're coming from. So uh, it's nice to see that Maryland's got some laws against that. So that's really interesting. You know, kind of protects that habitat and protects um, the fishery as well. It's a. Uh, it does. You know, some man. things. It does, it, it, yeah. I know sure. if you so, guys uh, down in Florida, you guys are big grass, you know, got grass down there too. So it's, you know, it's, you don't have it, man. It's, it's a different story. You know, three or four years ago, we didn't have grass on the river like it was. And I mean, it was horrible. You know, you're winning with 13, 14 pounds. And it's amazing right. how the fish, they just seem to disappear. Right. Right. You right. know, so Real quick before we let you go, yeah, Richard, what kind of bait, what, what kind of bait selection are we looking at? Are we talking about reaction baits? Like, Throwing a swim jig, chatter bait, maybe a jerk bait, top water, or are you? I mean, you mentioned throwing a jig. That's fine. Um, is that what you like to do? Is slow down this time of year and really um, fish slowly, or what kind of style do you yeah, like? Yeah, I, I, I'm a slow guy, man. I'm a, you know, I, I like to do a lot of flipping in the grass. Um, this time of year, I mean, you can pick your poison for real. I mean, you can catch them on a chat bait. You can catch them on a swim jig. You know, you can catch them on a Senko, a wacky Senko. You can catch them on a small swim bait, a big swim bait, a spinner bait. I mean, a crank bait, a rattle trap. I mean, it's it's pick your poison. You know, in two weeks for that BFL, I'll say it'll be one on a swim jig. That that would be if I had to guess at it. That that would be my guess. Absolutely. I'm gonna throw one all day. So hopefully it works out. <laughs> hey, hey, that works out. I like it. So, uh, well, Richard, you're giving us a lot of great information on the Potomac River. We want to wish you the best of luck. And thank you for all that you do for Revital Outdoors and all the other pro staff that support us. We really couldn't do it without you guys. Uh, Richard, before we let you go, I know you got a lot of other great pro staff that you're on. I know you got a great family support system, friend support system. You mentioned traveling with some buddies. Anybody you'd like to give a shout out to or a thank before we uh, let you go? Yeah, man, I guess, you know, first and foremost, you know, you got to thank the wife. Gosh, couldn't do none of this if it wasn't for her. She puts up with it and the traveling and being gone and all that stuff. And then I got hooked up a couple years ago with uh, Bass 365. And, you know, those guys are just, you know, Ricky Bosford, you know, man, they're they're phenomenal. And they've done things for me I couldn't even imagine. Um, level Rods. Anthony Gagliardi makes a great product, very affordable. And then you guys, I'm going to tell you, <laughs> I wasn't a big believer in it. And then I tried it and I was like, you got to be kidding. The CBD cream, you spend all day standing on the deck of these boats. Yes, sir. The back hurts. The arms hurt. The neck hurts. But forward sonar now, you know, I, I seem like I'm looking down at the grass more than I'm, you know, looking at what I'm doing. So. By the end of the day, your neck hurts, and man, that that CBD cream is it is the ticket. Now, I ran into a guy who actually had bought some. He seen what I'd posted and bought some of it, and he was the same way. I mean, it's it's a phenomenal product, man. You guys do a great job with it. 
Absolutely, absolutely. Richard, while we have you on, I got a couple products here. I just want to show the audience real quick. So this is two of our brand new products we just released this year. This is our uh, CBD sports cream. It's got 400 milligrams of our CBD oil that uh, Richard was just talking about. I, I know he's ordered some of this stuff. He's had great results with it. This is what he's talking about. And we also are going to throw in the uh, CBD gummies. So this is the new green apple flavor. We also offer it in strawberry lemonade. Personally, I like the green apple. Um, numerous of our pro staff, myself included, the owner of the company, the way that we go about our day, we're outdoor enthusiasts like everybody else. I mean, we're not just people that talk about this and try to sell you a product. We're out in the field. We deal with the ailments. We deal with the aches and sorenesses. We deal with the trouble sleeping at night. One of the things we recommend for all anglers is either the uh, CBD gummies, which I have right here, taking a couple of these in the morning when you wake up before you get on the water. That's just head-to-toe inflammation relief. Gets you a great dose of our premium CBD oil and provides all that inflammation relief. And then throughout the day, like Richard just talked about, when you're getting those aches and soreness, you're getting that discomfort in your elbows, in your uh, shoulders, in your back, rub a little of this cream on here uh, on the areas that are inflamed that you're having trouble with. This, These two products will get you through the day. And remember, these are THC-free. They're made right here in America. And we're an outdoor enthusiast company supporting the outdoor enthusiasts out there. So, uh, Richard, really appreciate you mentioning that as well. Absolutely, man. I like to call it my Mr. Miyagi cream because you just rub a little bit of it on and it just it's like it's, it's amazing, man. It, it really is a great product. Great product. Absolutely. Real quick, I'm going to put up a uh, I'm going to put up a code. So Richard Hare, he is on our pro staff, as we mentioned. He does have a uh, discount. Let's just put this up. Let me do the ticker real quick. There is his discount code. Use the code HAIR20. Go to our website. Order your product. Use this code. It's going to save you 20% off. Um, so really great product. Save a few dollars while you're at it and check out our website. But also, if you're checking out the website, make sure you hit that link down at the bottom. Enter our giveaway. It's going to be a $2,500 giveaway for all the anglers out there. You won't want to miss that. So, Richard, uh, thank you again for all that you do for Revital Outdoors. And uh, we wish you the best of luck this year. And uh, good luck at Smith Mountain this uh, the coming weekend. But then good luck at the Potomac River. And I hope we're talking to you very, very soon again. Yeah, I'm going to need it this weekend. The water don't like to move down on the Smith Mountain. So I'm, <laughs> I, I struggle in those places. <laughs> I, I hear you. I hear you. But you're going to have a good tournament. I know what kind of fishing you like to do. This time of year really fits your style. So really looking forward to uh, watching you for sure. So uh, from all of us at Revital Outdoors, again, you've been talking to Mr. Richard Hare, pro staff to Revital Outdoors, but a phenomenal angler in the state of Virginia and in the Potomac River area. So wishing you the best of luck, wishing all the uh, Shenandoah tournament anglers the best of luck this year and all the BFL anglers that are fishing in 2022. Again, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Enter that giveaway we just mentioned. And then if you're interested in a premium CBD product that's THC-free and made right here in America, check out our website, RevitalOutdoors.com. From all of us at Revital Outdoors, again, I'm Theron Asbury. Thank you for tuning into this podcast. God bless. Be safe out there, and we'll talk to everyone very, very soon. <laughs>